everybody, and welcome to The Void, a show dedicated to filling the void between being an employee and becoming self-employed. Most people refer to starting your own company as taking the leap, as if they are blindly jumping off a cliff and into the unknown. This show is here to help you understand that it doesn't have to be that way. As always, if you like what you're hearing on the show, please do us a favor and help share the void with somebody else who might also be wanting to start their own company. We saw an opportunity to help others understand that self-employment is well within your reach, and just as our businesses have grown organically and by word of mouth, we want this show to grow the same way. So if you see somebody asking questions about starting their own service-based business, please do us a favor and drop them a link to the show. I'm your host, Mitch Smedley, and with me as always is David Hilton. Mitchell, I would like to apologize to you and Uh, all the listeners uh for the show coming out one day late. Yeah, oh yeah. Sorry, my bad. How was the performance? So I went to an elementary school choir performance for my daughter. She's, this is like the third one. Yeah. But this time, so all this, the elementary schools that dump into the middle school that she will go to, had they all sang two songs. Yeah. So it was like an hour long. So it was like eight songs of fourth and fifth graders and then a middle school and then <laughs> hour too long and then yeah. the uh uh the high school was actually good right you know uh but yeah it was those middle like, school i work. love watching my kid do stuff like you know i'm cheering her on and like after the third elementary school i'm like man dude what's worse is those, all, those middle school orchestras like oh, yeah. when they're oh, like yeah. one or two. Oh man but yeah it was uh parts of it were very painful so we very, very, very painful. We we have to do something similar to that. Mason, our oldest in middle school, he's in orchestra, Austin. Yep. What does he play? Uh, plays violin. Oh, that's right. You, I knew that. Um, I used to play the violin. He, uh, <laughs> he's not good. <laughs> he and he knows this. I'm not bashing on him. Is he, does he practice? Yeah, he so pretty much fakes said, it through the performance. So that being said, I've never come over here and heard him like yeah, yeah. practicing. You're that's welcome. why. You're welcome. <laughs> well, so, no, he's not going to get any better if he doesn't practice. Well, we go to these performances, and like last year, he was in uh, <laughs> sixth grade, which in our area of the nation, sixth grade is middle school. Middle school is sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah. Um, changes all over the nation, right? Mm-hmm. So um, middle school does their orchestra performance at the high school, and and they also tag on the high school performances, too. So it's like it's long seven or eight different mm-hmm. rounds of orchestra, right? And so they just do them in great order, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sixth, seventh, eighth, all the way. And so, like, I can remember when he was in sixth grade, like, they send out all these letters and they tell the kids, like, you're not allowed to leave after you perform. We have to support oh, yeah, everybody. Yeah. And and I I emailed, like, the, the orchestra teacher, you know, sends an email. You need to be st- plan on staying for the entire thing. And I'll be like, I'll be damned <laughs> if I'm going to listen to my kid play two songs and then have to sit through another hour and a half of bullshit. So yeah. I emailed the teacher back, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but we'll be taking Mason home when he's done playing. Yeah. And so <laughs> everyone else goes and sits down, and he walked up the aisle right to us, and we yeah. high tail. No, no, like you should have said that because now the teacher's gonna be like, okay, Mason's group is playing last. No. Well, they don't get to fix that. Do they just yeah. do an order. Uh, so but yeah, it was it was fun and painful, like all at the same time. Yeah, and that, it took me back for all. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one knows. I don't know if we've ever said anything on the show. Mitch and I were in choir together. Yeah, in high school. Yeah, for four years. So I mean, look at the look on Austin's face. <laughs> well, no, like what sparked me is like you know, like when you're in elementary school, like and you go back like twenty well, years this later. The subject. No, this is the same subject. <laughs> the school looks like ten times smaller. Yeah, yeah. You're like this is really like well, the size of the school. I went not to. our school, not South. Cause no, it's got bigger. <laughs> it's gotten twice it's got as big since bigger. we were there. Yeah, Probably three times as big. But yeah, Mitch and I, we were saying so. Like the the high school kids were really good, and I was like, oh, so it. It was Lee Summit North High School. Well, yep. They have two sets of cha- chamber choir, I guess. Mm-hmm. So they have a freshman, sophomore, and then a junior, senior. Well, the junior, senior wasn't there. It was just the freshman, sophomore. They were, they were awesome. They were good. Yeah, they were good. awesome. So it was really good. Austin will get a kick out of this. Uh, yeah, Dave and I were in choir, right? And we would have like our little musical variety show. Mm-hmm. And there was one year where me and Dave and two other fellas tried out for the variety show. We tried out by playing Hotel California. It was me, you, and one other person. Uh, I thought it was two of us. It was two others because we had uh, David Cook and we had Bobby Kerr. Bobby Kerr didn't do it. Are you sure? Yeah. 
You sure? David Cook played the bongos and sang, and me and you played guitar. Played guitar. Two guitars. And we didn't so, make it. Right. And we didn't make so the So we show. didn't make it. <laughs> and and we, it was awesome, and, by the way. Now, now, here's why. I, I've learned over the years, it took me a while, but I learned why. Um, David here, our co-host David. Yeah. You. I'm... I'm you, I, I'm trying to figure out where you're going with this. Uh, you later went on to be in a band and put out an album and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, Bobby Kerr later went on to yeah. He's in a lot. In of, a, he's in a lot of cover bands. Be, yeah, he can like play. like he's real good, right? Yeah, I like Bobby. He's good. Well, I went on to do nothing. And David Cook went on and, to and win American David, Idol. David Cook went on to win American Idol, and mm. so are you uh, thinking it's all you? Is I'm that- thinking. <laughs> Like, I don't think that's why right. Why didn't you guys just tell me I sucked? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you sucked. I think you played fine. <laughs> no. So. You bash, bash Mitch Day, I guess. Yeah. Well, no, it's I'm like... I'm like, huh. As, as, as time rolls <laughs> on and everybody evolves into like this musical established career, and I'm like... Damn! No, I, the, I was the reason we didn't was make I the, the, the talent Son show. Of a bitch, <laughs> I was the outcast. It's one of those things where you have a guy who's like... Is like very attractive, like the women. He he takes along someone who's not attractive. Be like, well, the look at him. He's the and be like, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, man, like I look way better than this guy. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys didn't know it. I was setting you up for your musical careers. Thank you. Mitch. You needed the inspiration of not making the talent show in high school so that you could go uh, on to do great things. I made no money in that. Bobby Kerr, career. if you're listening, you are welcome. <laughs> you think Bobby listens to the podcast? I think yeah, so. You might. He's got a podcast. Yeah. I might be a guest on his podcast. I've listened to it a few times. It's actually yeah. pretty good. Yeah. You know, he his is better lot. than ours. He gets a lot of fancy people well, there. Well, you know why? So he, he, he does tries. that baseball fantasy camp every uh-huh. year. So he's played baseball with George Brett and all oh, those yeah. guys. Yeah. I saw on there the other day he had Bill Althouse on, mm-hmm. who used to write for the Star. Now, well, I Bill and I were really good friends for like 10 years. Like yeah. They did an article on us that was in the Grain Valley Examiner and uh, been over to his house. Dude, he has more signed memorabilia. I mean, I'm talking like Babe Ruth baseball. Oh, yeah. I'm talking Muhammad Ali gloves. I'm talking. This episode is brought to you by Field Pulse, the official field service management software provider of The Void. Field Pulse allows you to organize your customers, your employees, your jobs, and your revenue with ease. Field Pulse is the perfect option no matter if you're a business of one or 100, and their plans start at just $99 a month. Check out the link to Field Pulse in the description of this show. The, his entire basement is full of this stuff. It's all, he has one of him and George Brett were like really good friends. Yeah, he has one of George Brett's Silver Slugger awards. Wow! He mm-hmm. call, I guess George called him one day and was like, "Hey, I'm just throwing all this stuff out. You want any of it?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." And he went over there and like got all these trophies <laughs> and stuff. George Brett was like, "Like, didn't he?" And Bill's told me this. He's like, "He doesn't care about that stuff. Yeah. yeah, he just wanted to play ball. Yeah, that's it. That's all he cared about. He wanted to win World Series and play ball, and that's it. That's funny." But yeah, interesting. Yeah, blast from the past. Blast from the past. What do you want to talk about today, Mitch? Got three topics, like mm-hmm. always. Okay. Topic one. What do you want to talk about? China spy balloon. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> okay. Topic two: preventing price objections. Oh, like in business? So yeah. Like a valid topic. Okay, like good. an actual valid business. Okay. We're going to add value to you guys today. <laughs> Got it. Valid topic. Got topic it. three is a surprise. You have to wait till the end. <clears throat> Okay. So, yeah. So. It's not like dick in a box surprise, is it? You never know. I got this can of Pringles here. I need you to stick your hand down there and find Justin, it. like you need a can of Pringles. <laughs> it's the small can. It's the short can. So. Oh, my God. China launches a uh, spy balloon, or yeah. so we think. We don't know what it is, right? It's a spy balloon. They, they called it a civilian aircraft. It's because they're liars. <laughs> if, if for some reason you're new to, like, I don't know, the world. China uh, only cares about themselves, and yeah. that's pretty much it. So whatever they say is usually a lie. Right. Right. So uh, this thing comes in over the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, goes all the way across Alaska, comes down through Canada. Uh, and across then Montana. Across Montana. Across down Missouri. Right, across, like right over our heads. You can see it. Yeah. People were calling in the day. Oh, you don't listen to talk How radio. do you see something that's for Like... Like, I mean, I'm not just, I'm not questioning it, was, it. I'm like, how do you see something that's 40,000 feet in the air? It was 200 foot tall. It was huge. This isn't like a little balloon you launch in your backyard. Well, well I, I mean, I, it's I imagine it's some size, but 200 foot, 200 foot tall. Wow. That's, okay. that's like 18 stories. Yeah. That's huge. It's humongous. Wow. Okay. But anyways, go on. How long is a 747? I have no idea. 
Oh, yeah, I just have it off the top of my head. Yeah, Austin, like, come on. <laughs> so I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to think. You have a computer by now. I'm trying to think. Like, you can see a 747 at 30,000 feet. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm just for perspective. Yeah. So, and the 747 is 231 feet, feet and 10 inches. Okay. okay. So, so yeah. And how, how tall was the balloon? It was 200 feet tall. Yeah, so it's about the same. Yeah, except for it's length. Vertical, it's vertical, right? Anyways, and, and wide. Yeah. It's probably easier it. to see than a 747, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, they were saying it. So it, it flew over all our major, uh, for Americans that don't know, and you can Google it, so I'm not giving up any secrets here. Yeah. Most of our military weapons and where we launched them from is in Montana. Yeah. In Wyoming. And we have Whiteman Air Force Base where they house the B-2 bombers. Yeah. Uh, and it flew right over the top yeah, of that. which is close to us. It's 40. So. I think it takes us 45 minutes, an hour to get there. Yeah, not too far. One of the coolest things ever. So when I worked in Warrensburg, <clears throat> we used to have to go out there all the time. And uh, not to Whiteman. I've only been on Whiteman once. But there was a highway. And by highway, I mean a little two-lane, shitty-ass road that would you could drive down, and it literally follows mm-hmm. their main runway. And one day we were going uh, down that road to do a job, and a B-2 was literally landing. Like, we're side-by-side, side and oh, it's wow. landing. It, it probably one of the coolest experiences of my life. Top it was, gun shit. It was <laughs> awesome. I mean, and it's close. What's weird is it's close. Like, yeah. if someone wanted to do something bad, that would is be, be where you would do it. Yeah. Like, you can literally, and there's no checkpoints or nothing. You're just driving down the road. I mean, I know that they have people oh, watching show those up. roads. Yeah. They have people watching those roads. Don't get me wrong. Like, and there are yeah. bunkers along the road yeah. on that side and on the other side where they can stage troops if something to protect the base. It's yep. pretty eerie. Yeah, because someone was, probably saw you through a scope. Oh, yeah. They were, <laughs> they were looking at us. I'm driving a box van just, you know, cruising down the road. They're like, that's not yeah. a threat, you know. Look at this clown. I have a guy who has a story like that, except when he looked over, the V2 was like, like just sideways, like up and down, parallel. Like that's that. so mad. Cool. Yeah. It was, it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So one of the other things that it flew over was Lake City, Lake City Ammunition Plant. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking flown directly over, right? So yeah. at that height... You can see a, you, you can, can see, see six hundred miles yeah. in all directions, right? Yeah. So it's it's obviously seeing more than that, but it flew directly over all this stuff. So, um, and then our uh, uh, amazing this. government decided to wait until it crossed the entire U.S. before shooting it down. Yeah. Because um, it's probably transmitted data like you know live. They're not going to be like, oh, we're going to get our balloon back. I thought about that too. I mean, are they just you know sending that information? I, I mean, I know that that is they're capable of that, but I bet you they were planning on capturing that and then. What kind of data do you think it was getting? Photos. You think photos? Photos. Awesome. What do you think? I mean, photos, th- temperature readings, stuff like that, and locations, exact locations. You are you are a lot more innocent than I am. What do you mean? Well, let me ask you this. So, why would you need to know that information? You would need to know that information for one reason. Yeah. To strike those specific locations before you did something. Yeah. If you're if you're trying to gather intel on yeah. where are the B2s parked at Whiteman yeah. and all of They're that. They're not right? all at Whiteman, but right. a majority of them are. Well, what I'm thinking is, is it's capturing data, but I'm thinking it's all data. Like? Farm ground. No. People. Not even visual. Sucking up data that we're training. Cell towers. Mm-hmm. Internet, everything your business is doing, all data being transmitted over the air. I, I, I have a feeling it's absorbing. I don't think that they're doing that with the balloon. They can tag into the internet and take whatever they want. Well, I'm sure if they we could. Do it to them. They do it to us. I think they. I think they've been doing that. I think all governments have been doing that for. Yeah. Forever. I don't but, think you need a spy balloon to do that. But the, to your point. You don't need a spy balloon to go grab the location of military bases either, because they're like you can see those on Google Maps, right? So you got to think they have access yeah, to Google can. Maps just like we do. So they're they're doing things that you can't do with Google Maps. Now, granted, Google Maps is not live. Google Maps is not up to date. Google Maps is not current and weekly. You know, but it's it's you got to be thinking they're they're gaining well, so, information that you can't get on Google Maps. Oh, so they have Google Maps times seventy five on their own satellites and we don't see any of that. Right. So you're right. So, so let me ask you this. If, if I'm right and they don't, and they can get our information from the internet and everywhere and hack it and you're right, what were they flying the balloon for? 
I don't know. To piss people off? I, I'm just, I'm just looking. I, that's what I would do. I'd just be mad. I'd be like, well, you know what? I'm just going to fuck with these people. So I was, Mason was asking, like, what, what do you think they're doing with it? And he, and Mason, of course, he's you know young and naive. He was like, all, all they got to do is look on Google Maps if they want to see shit. <laughs> and, and I'm like, Mason, they're, they're gathering a whole lot more than Google Maps. Um, it's also possible that maybe the balloon had some biological warfare in it. And so they were thinking, ah, if they shoot it down, fuck them. Right, it's COVID two or whatever. Um, it's still in a test run for something like that. It's also possible so that balloon went across the northern half of the U.S. It's also possible that they did tell the truth, which I'm contradicting myself from earlier. I know this, mm-hmm. and it did just get off track, and they didn't know where it was. I don't buy that. Right, right, right. But that could be a possibility. It's also possible that they're just fucking with you, and they're like, "Hey, let's send this million dollar paper airplane over the U.S. and see how they react." Yeah. And it literally has nothing in it. It's not just touching a you, not touching you, not touching you, not touching you, box. not touching you. Yeah. Right. right. So it's it's interesting they named it a civilian aircraft because if you shoot down a civilian aircraft, that can be deemed an act of war and they can start a fight, right? Yeah. I didn't hit you first. You know what? If we go to war with China, we'll be able to buy fully automatic weapons again. So I say, <laughs> bring it on, bitch. <laughs> so um, my, my big concerns with it is what does it look like to other countries? Yeah. Other like, so we have a threat. We don't know what it is. It might not even be a threat, but you have to treat everything like a threat, right? Like yeah. you don't you don't let some stranger go walking across the White House lawn. You, yeah. You blow his head off and then ask questions later. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Why, how, yeah. How is this different than that? Is I agree with you a hundred percent. It's complete horseshit. When they saw it out in the ocean before it got to the Aleutian Islands, shoot the fucking thing down. Yeah. That's your job as Department of Defense. Or the U.S. when it's over Canada. You go shoot the fucking thing down. Or Montana. <laughs> yeah, like, I, leave, I, I, leave it, 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 leave it, it leave yeah. as Canada's problem. That's true. Well, they don't have guns. They can't shoot it down. Well, they just said, they were like, well, we didn't want the debris to hurt. Have you been to Montana? Yeah, there's exactly. There's nothing in Montana. Okay, right. it's fine. Except there's John Mayer. There's nothing in... <laughs> There's nothing in Montana. There's nothing in South Dakota. Yeah, it's... it's there's a, nothing in Nebraska. It's a really bad show of weakness. Yeah. Like, you know... In, I mean, in, in no reality, down. there's not much in Missouri either. No, there's not. They could I have mean, shot it over South Dakota, North Dakota, Missouri, when it was in northern Missouri. Yeah. They're saying that the debris field was seven miles long. I know a lot of places that are seven miles long, and there's like one house. And... <laughs> but I mean, the chances yeah. of hitting that house are pretty slim. And if it, put, if it compromises your country's safety let's just say the thing came down and killed 100 people it's like i'm just being legit here it's worth the sacrifice of 100 civilians to ensure that your your country's safety is is safe yeah but that's not even a question because they had the options to do the other things right? right well and you can't tell me that they don't have the technology to go up there and just capture the balloon right you know what i mean you tell well, me they can't go up there and rope that son of a bitch mm-hmm. and just tow it down, right? Come on. I mean, I've I've seen Tom Cruise do crazier shit. I've seen <laughs> I've seen Mitch Smedley do crazier shit. I, just, I don't understand. Just you know, pull it down. Yeah. See what's all. That's what I would have wanted is to bring it down and then be like, well, let's dive into this bitch and see what they were doing. Yeah. That'd be the only way. But no, we blew up the evidence instead. Right. You know, too late after it had already traversed the entire country. Right. You know, I heard some interesting things guys were saying about you know immediately it comes up well there was balloons across the country when trump was president and trump and the, all those people and and everyone was like well we were never notified and then there were these conversations starting to spur about the department of defense sees that stuff first that's their job mm-hmm. and they have been going out of their way to not inform a president, maybe two presidents now, because there are people saying that maybe they didn't inform Biden until there was an uproar. They were just going to let it do its thing. It, but then there was an uproar and he had to be notified. Yep. I mean, we don't know exactly what's going on. But when the Department of Defense, their number one job is to consult with the master in chief mm-hmm. to decide what we're going to do. They're saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to just do what we want to do over here. That is a major problem. Right. It's just like the Department of Justice saying we're going to prosecute whoever the hell we want. Yep. We're just going to kind of we're going to say we're the baddest motherfuckers ever and we're just going to do what we want. There's yep. going to be no chain of command. There's going to be no right from wrong. We're just going to do what we want. And that is a huge problem. Yeah. Huge problem. It just kind of feels like some of the some of the institutions are a little out of practice. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, what if, yeah. like what if that had been like another Pearl Harbor? Out of practice well, what or I'm, intentionally reacting slowly? Maybe like uh, being, just being lazy, just, you know, carelessness. Means, They've had, they I, haven't I, had to really I, exercise. I get this point, being careless. Just, yeah. hey, you know, it's not, nothing's happened, so it's not going to happen. Right. And yeah. That's why Pearl Harbor happened. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone was in the same boat we are now. Oh, yeah. no one's going to attack that's us. That's a here. flock of birds. Yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, what better time now? Because, I mean, it's 1942 Pearl Harbor? Yeah. 1943. One of those. But, I mean, it's been quite a bit, so it's I mean, like. It was 41. It, yeah. Or, Look it up. You got the Google machine. We got to get him a laptop that's open all the time that has yeah. a note at the top that says, look stuff up when we're talking about it. <laughs> Poor kid. Um, I'm working him hard lately. So, he's doing good. The job. day after they shot it down. Thank you. Um, I'm working out at the gym and I got my earbuds in, listening to other podcasts and shit. Is this like when you were listening to the earbuds and then watching two screens yeah. and you had your whole story confused because yep. you have ADHD? Yep, yep. Okay, got it. So, um,. You know, they've got one TV on, like, MSNBC, and they have another TV on Fox. <clears throat> the MSNBC TV, it has one moniker. Like, I can't hear what they're saying. 41. Man. Ah, I knew it. Yep. Sorry. Continue. Sorry. I knew it, but I was just... Well, December wanna... 7th, so almost 1942. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Yeah. He almost shot me in the face. Right. Did he shoot you in the face or almost shoot you in the face? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the MSNBC TV... Uh, they, they flash up a moniker for about five minutes that says, and I'm on the stair machine, right? So I get to see this for like 45 fucking minutes. Um, they, they flash up one moniker for five minutes, and it says Biden ordered the China balloon shot down. When the China spy balloon, whatever, shot down. All it says is Biden, or, Biden ordered the balloon to be shot down. Yeah. And then five minutes later, they change the moniker to say China spy balloon flew across U.S., to, uh, during Trump, yeah, or due to Trump, or something like that. Like they were, they were trying to act like it came across the U.S. during Trump or because of Trump, but yeah. Biden shot it down. Maybe, maybe yeah, the reason I, why I'm, I'm telling you dude, <laughs> well, the freaking news manipulation is bullshit. So it is horrible. So here's it this: awful. it is horrible. The reason why maybe they took it so long to shoot down is because they were like, we got to think about a way to put this back on Trump, and then at the end they're like, well. We'll just say it happened during Trump. <laughs> That's why it took him so long. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, my favorite channel, Newsmax, mm -hmm. got booted off DirecTV. Right. And I haven't canceled my DirecTV, but I am. Like, how are you going to take these programs? This is a little off topic, but Mitch got me fired up about MSNBC. How are you going to take programs that are telling the truth that people want to listen to and take them off so that you can put up whatever you want to put up? Because they want to manipulate you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, that can be the only reason. Yeah. We don't want you to hear the truth. I, I, yeah. I, and I love how they preach white supremacy and Nazism and all this stuff. Well, do you know what they did? Back then, is everyone they controlled the news? They controlled the news, yeah, and that's what they're doing now. And people are like, "No, they're not." Yeah, it's so obvious to me. Yeah, it, I, I feel like I'm living in the fucking twilight zone sometimes. Yeah. But you know, I didn't know the show was going to go this way. Now you got me all fired up, and it fucking pisses me <laughs> it's off. It's like an old school Beyond the Void show. <laughs> it is like an old school Beyond the Void show. It just makes me so mad. Well, that I mean, people are so dumb. For me, it's weird. Like <sighs> I had the luxury of not realizing what was even happening. So my day was actually really good that day. Every time I logged into Facebook, everyone's like, "Look at my backyard up in the sky." I'm like, "What is this?" I shot, <laughs> I shot Facebook down. So the whole day, I'm like, so after like I was able to have a productive day, and I realized that everyone on Facebook was like talking about the Chinese Bible. I'm like. I didn't even know about it, and my well, day was just fine. <laughs> I mean, in all reality, too, like, you don't need to know about it. Yeah. I mean, the government... That's why you, we pay taxes. Right. You don't need to worry about it, because yeah. we're paying taxes. Mm. So... But you still should be informed, isn't that what I say? You right. always be informed. Right. The... Yeah, I mean, you got one... You got, you got MSNBC acting like Biden did a great job handling this thing, and then you got, like, Fox acting like it's one of the biggest blunders Biden's ever had. And, and the truth is, it's in the middle. It was yeah. a blunder and horseshit, but it, well, maybe not the biggest one ever. Yeah. And the truth is, like, really, it doesn't fucking matter because, like, until we know any better, this was probably all just one big fucking practical joke from China. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there's probably three guys in a microphone sitting there going, all right, now make the balloon go over this airbase and see what they do. All right. Well, no, it's a practical jokers. We could go over that. Yeah. Ah! Oh, they like awards and medals, so let's let, let's get it at forty thousand feet and let them get like let them give this guy a medal for the highest air to air kill yeah. of a balloon. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know? so dumb. So yeah, like you never really know what's happening with it, and and there's not a lot you can do to prevent. Any and of you that saw stuff. on Facebook two people who Manchester. people who can tell they were like they saw that and they wanted to just validate like their side so they instantly go to google and then they'll like just spill it on oh well, well, it turns out chinese owns a little bit of missouri so it's like okay First it's off, like china you know, owns like 20 percent of our farm ground or some crazy but, number now right it's ridiculous but, like that person would have never known that or even like cared about searching balloons and chinese and like you yeah. know missouri but just like oh god I've, i love how they, people are like well the chinese government they or they bought up all our farm ground. They did all this, and they blah blah. blah and they're gonna just it, it's gonna be China. And they no. If there's a war, we're gonna give them the middle finger and say that's ours now. We're taking yeah. it back, yeah. and we're not giving you any money for it. <laughs> you don't like it? Come and get it. Right. Like that's what would happen. Right. right? Like no. Let's let's just right. everybody don't panic. Chill down a little. Yeah. Bit. Let's take their money. Mm-hmm. Keep it, and then if it hurts us in the end, we'll just take it back. Yeah. I think hindsight twenty twenty, the best scenario would be like taking that down before it even touched any over, because it's like every every hour that you let it kind of go over, it's yeah. like oh, it's like is there are they weak or are they just don't care? I mean, it should have been like we actually took the balloon down with not extreme force, been like we're not even gonna like even care enough to like send juts out or anything. They like should have just when it was over the Lucian Islands, they should have been like we're gonna capture it. And we're going to set it down in Seattle, and we're going to own it, and we're mm. going to see what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what they should have done. It's like a video recorder, so just give them a <laughs> It's just a picture of their president giving Joe yeah. Biden the finger or something. Say, that you, would be hilarious. You open it up, and it's like, <laughs> gotcha. How a whole bunch of rubber would, snakes pop out of it or something. How much do you think it would cost to get a balloon to China from here? It'd be a long ride. Do you think mm. we could get one? Like, you and I could buy one, and it's just... It's just an American flag and a middle finger, and then we just fly it over their air bases. Like, how much do you think that would cost us to do? What if that's like the new like war? It's not like it's not by a war. It's like we're just sending balloons yeah. back and forth, and it's just right. like yeah. pictures and messages. Actually, we're allies with Japan, so me and you go to Japan. We get this balloon, we launch it, we fly it over to China, and it's just an American flag and the middle finger. Kind of going the wrong way for the trade winds there. You got to get west of China. What are you talking about? We're flying the balloon. We land in Tokyo. We launch the balloon. Send it to the east. That's I why where you're going. I also know else is going to get it. Yeah. I also know by the whole like oh it was blown off course like hundreds of thousands of miles. <laughs> yeah. But Danielle's driving. I mean, it's been known to happen. Yeah. <laughs> she, she can get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's enough of that. Interesting stuff with the China balloon. It was a jackass. It was a hot hashtag for a minute. It's over. Yep. People will forget. They'll need something else to bitch about tomorrow. They'll find it. Yeah. yeah. So, topic two, preventing price objections. So, this topic spawns from the weird phenomenon that happens in the trades industry where people will ask tradespeople for discounts and to modify their price where they wouldn't ask anybody else. Um, you know, never once have I seen a realtor go to the checkout line at Home Depot and buy a box of nails and tell the checkout person like, Hey, I have a lot of friends. If you give me a discount on these nails, I can send a lot of people your way. They just don't do that. No, but they do it to tradespeople all the time. Yeah. Um, never once have I seen somebody go to, you know, the 54th street bar and grill and say, mm, I'm on a fixed income. Can you give me a better price on that steak? I have gone to 54th Street and said, how about a free beer? <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. I have one and been like, do you want another one? Is it free? Can I get a free beer? Like, I've asked. Well, they, they do not, have a punch card at 54th yeah, Street. I'm not so. heckling or, <laughs> you know, trying to convince them. I just ask out, like, hey, can I get that for free? He doesn't right. haggle. He just goes straight for the free. Free. Uh, I've got Do you have a Miss Poor that I can take? I've had a few free beers that yeah. I did. So there's these things <laughs> there's these things that happen in trades that don't happen anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And um, there's not a lot you can do about it. 
right? You can you can make fun of it and you can you can act like oh I take the high road and I tell those customers to fuck off or whatever, but then you don't have customers. So the best way to do it is to realize that it happens and then realize what you can do in your control to change that and to lessen the impact of that. Yeah, and you know, we've talked about it on the show the way Mitch does it or not exactly the way Mitch does it. The way I did it back in the day was when so in heating and cooling, it's a little bit different. It's either fixed or it's not. You know, and I never really had an issue with people haggling. They would haggle on um, equipment replacements, entire change outs, things like that. Oh, hey, well, you know, are you sure that, you know, that's the price? Can I, you know, you've been doing my work for, so, you know, it was stuff like that to get mm-hmm. you down. Mm-hmm. So what I started doing, and we've talked about it on the show before, is I just automatically started giving people three options. Yep. And Mitch does that with service. Mm-hmm. And I didn't do it with service. I just did it with the equipment. I would give them the bare bones, cheapest equipment I could get with the cheapest price because it was easier, cheapest labor price because it was easier for me to put it in. Mm-hmm. Like all of the discounts they wanted or wanted to haggle, I kind of built it into those prices. Right. And then the middle, my middle group was always the most valuable mm-hmm. or the what I would do in my own home. Right. You know, uh, this is a little more money or, you know, maybe it was a little bit more than a little more money, but it was good efficiency at a decent price with a very quality install. Right. You know, and then I always gave them the best of the best because some people just want, you know, they want the best. I want the best. Right. You know, and that weeded out a lot of stuff because it was like I could just give that to them. Everything's typed up. Everything's written out. It's all right there. And if they want to haggle, they can't haggle. Right. Because I'm pitching them the middle option. If they want to haggle, well, you're just getting the lower. I can do this one for you. Right. And it was all built into that price already. Yep. So for me, that was one example of how it was just easy for me to not even have to hear about it. It was just built into the price. Right. I've got one, two, three, four. So I've got five proven methods to prevent price objections. I'm okay. A, I'm going to rattle off all five, and then we can dive into it. Okay, let me hear what you got. Okay. Option or uh, what do you, whatever you want to call it. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at me. Yeah. For those that aren't, he was looking at me for me to bail him out. I like, had nothing. I was like, I got nothing, bro. Tell me the word in my head. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I, and I'm usually pretty good at him. Tell me the words that I'm thinking. Uh, like, <laughs> dude, I don't yeah. have shit. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever he's like, I have five of them. Like, I feel like I'm just about to like watch an audio book. Yeah. Listen to an audio book. I'm like, chapter one. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> number one. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Five ways to prevent price objections. <laughs> number one, provide oh. three options at three different price points. Points. Number two, provide your options in a printed price standpoint. Don't speak your price and don't handwrite your price. Option three, or number three, don't haggle yourself. In other words, don't say that this usually costs twenty nine ninety five, but if you buy today, I can do it for twenty six hundred, because you just opened the door for haggling. Yeah. Number four. Never reduce your price without reducing the scope of work. So if you give somebody a bid for five grand for some amount of work and they say, ah, can you do it for 4,500? Find $500 worth of value to remove from that bid and say, I can, but I got to take this out. Yeah. And they'll and usually that's come kind back. Of, that's kind of the three options thing, too. Yep. You know, you've automatically, from two to one, you've automatically done that. Right. And number five, never run a sale. The mm-hmm. moment you run a sale, you are telling your customers that usually we screw you out of this 30%, but if you buy right now, we'll give it to you for 30% off. This is the true value of that. Whenever you run a sale, you are telling your customers this is the true cost or the true value of this item. Mm -hmm. So whenever it's not on sale... We're screwing you for the extra part. Well, that's the diamond commercials you hear all the time, right? Yeah. The guy says, oh, we don't have sales because, and he literally says, well, they have sales because they're screwing you the other 80% of the time. Right. You know? Right. Well, you're, it's, it's funny, though. They still have sales. So I'm not sure if people just aren't listening to that stuff. They don't buy it. Right. They think that guy's giving them a pitch against the, their pitch. That's a, another topic for another day. On the, I guess something on that number, what was the number four again? I think I have something for that. 
What well, was number four? Oh, Never that, reduce oh. price without scope. So on this one, there, I, a, a funny one you could do like in the photography world because the common thing you get is like, oh, well, I could just take photos on my phone. So you say, oh, well, just give me your phone and we'll go out and we'll take pictures with your phone. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'll take $5 off. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. And I'll take $5 off. Right. Yeah. So like running back through these, um, number one, Provide three options at three different price points, just like what you were talking about. Yeah. What that what that allows the customer to do is it allows them to buy on their terms, but it also lets them give themselves the discount. Exactly. And so if they needed it at a cheaper price, well, they can look at the cheaper option. Um, we should probably start going over this stuff before the show. Yeah. Um, Maybe not. The other, <laughs> the other thing that it does is it provides credibility to each of one of your prices because they can see that the the better the options, the more value, the higher the price. Right. Um, and so it, it, it actually like fulfills the value in each one. If you go to a customer and you only give them one price and one option, they can either make the choice, do I like that price or do I not? And if they don't, you don't get a sale. Well, if you give them you can give them context by giving them three prices with three different options, and now they can weigh benefits and and everything of each option. They can weigh their budget. They can weigh the items that they like from each option, and they can pick the best one for them, and they will not haggle you on price. Yeah, and a lot of times uh, I feel like, especially uh, on bigger price um, items or services, people already have a number in their head. You know, and if you give them one number, that's why they're trying to negotiate to that. Right. You know what I mean? But if you give them three options and one of those is real close, mm -hmm. you've almost made the sale without doing anything. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You've right. given them the price that they want. Yeah. And if they want to, like some people haggle because they need to feel like they're saving money. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, just, they just need to feel like I saved money on yeah, this, right? Yeah. Well, know when you give them three like options, that. they're going to buy that middle option or the bottom option, and they see exactly how much they saved. Yeah. If it was a $100 mm -hmm. option, a $200 option, and a $300 option, well, if they bought the bottom one, they either saved $100 or $200. But they, bucks. they feel like you've already done the work for them. And yeah. Work. Also, too, I feel like the dumbest person ever whenever I buy something and like the like next day it goes on sale. Right. Yeah. Like, isn't that a freaking slap in the face? Yeah, like, um, with that yeah. shoulder rig I bought, I bought it, it was like 350 or whatever. Yeah. And then, like, literally, it wasn't even, like, a small sale. It was, like, the next week, it was, like, $100 off. Right. I'm like, man, I could have saved so much money. You know, yeah. sales can work in the commodities market, like a grocery store. Um, it does not work in the service industry. You're selling oh, a course. service. You're not selling yeah. a commodity. I, I, and the, and I, the moment you start doing sorry. sales, you're... you're Basically reducing your services to a commodity. Yeah, and I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I You're thought right. you were done. The um, <clears throat> like at the store is different because that stuff's about to go bad. Mm -hmm. It's got to go out the door. Yeah. So they will sell it at their cost so that they don't lose money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. It's like Casey's with day old donuts. It's like a really yeah. If you don't sell these today, we lose everything. Or it's yeah. like a really old prostitute. <laughs> They're always half off. They're about to go expired, so they got to get their money's worth. <laughs> I never think Austin would say that. That's disgusting, Austin. I'm going to tell your wife. So, number two, printed price versus spoken price. Um, if you, do you walk mean bids, or do you mean like you just open the price book and say, here it I, is? Uh, what I'm saying is. Because I know that's not how your price book is. Right. So, what I'm saying is when you go to a restaurant. It's not the 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 waiter is not saying oh the cheeseburger is six ninety nine and uh, the the steak is I think it's nineteen ninety nine um, you know you, you're handed a menu and it's very professionally done from a power higher up than the waiter has established pricing right well what do a lot of tradespeople do. They walk into a customer's house and they're like, "Oh, how much to do this repair?" And the guy's like, "Ah, I could do that for about six hundred bucks." Well, well, what, what does about mean? Right. And and what message did you just convey? You mm -hmm. just conveyed that you, you that are in charge up. of the price. Well, you just made that price up, too. right? So, uh, whatever you're pricing on, um, and and some guys even do written pricing, right? They'll write it down on a piece of paper. Well, written is no better than spoken. Mm -hmm. um, so. Whenever you're presenting any kind of repairs or anything to the customer, it needs to be in a very professionally printed version. And printed could be on paper, but it could, it could also be like on your tablet. So like for us, we have a CRM 
uh, much like field pulse. Uh, we have a CRM that field pulse, field pulse, <laughs> field pulse, field here, pulse. Put on your put yeah. on your field pulse hat here. Oh hey, where when did you, I snuck that in there? You didn't even know it. Yeah. You know what's bullshit is I don't get any swag. Mitch gets all you, the swag. Oh, you got headphones on. Well, you would say that, but you've been drinking that whiskey for like the last six yeah. months. Mitch First gets off. all the swag. Jorge Diaz, I completely <laughs> forget everything you send us. Jorge, Mitch, and I still love you. I talked about Jorge. Yeah, it's too good for me anyway, but yeah. So for um, those that don't know, we are yeah. now sponsored by Field Pulse. Yeah. CRM software. Um, mm. So, so you take yes, your you, you plug in the three options into your CRM, right? Like a minor, like for us, a minor toilet rebuild, a major toilet rebuild, or a new toilet, and you could go either which way you want with that, right? Yeah. Well, then you put them all into your into your tablet, and you turn that around, and you show the customer, here are my three options. Yeah. And now the tablet has set the price, and the tablet also like it's got a higher authority than than you as this technician in the field, right? And right. I, I do this too. Like when I go <clears throat> run calls, I show them the price on the tablet and I show it to them. Now I do a really good job of not telling customers I own the company, and so uh, when I'm when I'm there, I still need the tablet to be the authority figure on the price. I don't want them to think I can sway the price. Yeah, right. It's written in stone right here. We have it on. Everything as it's, this is what it is, and that's it. Yeah, it's, it's a digital menu. number. It's right. your menu, right? Right. It's the menu at the restaurant. It's the exact same thing. It's just your built menu. Yep. So um, you know, just like Jiffy Lube, you go to Jiffy Lube, they got an oil change for what forty nine ninety nine, seventy nine ninety nine, and ninety nine ninety nine, or something like that, right? So try to it's, it's changes. printed. Hey guys, on start, there, start changing your own oil again. Yeah. Damn it, it makes me mad. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, topic again. <laughs> it, you know, it's printed on the menu, and so you get to pick good, better, best. It's not like, oh, I'd do that bottom one if you could shave a couple bucks off or, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. it's on there. Like, if you want to yeah. save money, you go with the bottom one. If you want the best option, you go with the top one. It, it's yeah. up to you, right? Um, uh, number three, don't haggle yourself. So many guys do this. They're, they're weak salesmen. And they think they're doing the customer a favor, and they think they're increasing the chance of a sale if I show the customer that I'm willing to work with them. And so they'll say, oh, normally this is like 4600 bucks, but I could probably do it for 4100 bucks." Well, right there, yeah. you just established that, one, price is flexible, and for two... This thing didn't have value at forty six hundred. It probably doesn't even have value at forty one hundred. Because especially if you're going to be spending that much money, you want to know exactly what you're spending your money on. You want to know what you're spending your money on, and you want to know um, like what you're getting for your money. And every second right? that you, every second that you don't give the price of like how much is this, and you go like every second is just adding to like uncertainty. Right. <laughs> so the other thing that it does. Is the 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 hidden message to the customer is if he just knocked off five hundred bucks and I didn't even have to ask, mm -hmm. just imagine he'll not how much he'll knock off if I ask. Yeah, right. They're automatically thinking I can get another five. So you or like, another two fifty. I mean, I get it. You you think you're helping the customer, but put yourself in the customer's shoes, and and reverse that rule right around. If somebody came to you and said, oh, "I could sell you this thing for forty six hundred bucks usually, but today I'll do it for forty one," I, the, th the first thing that pops into my head was, "Well, it's not worth forty six, and if he jumped down to forty one that easy, it's probably not worth forty one either." Because no, if he's making it a forty one, it's probably really worth thirty eight. I guarantee you, I can get it for the high mid to high thirties. And also, yeah. too, you're opening the door. Like, if you're going to be at that job all day, you're just opening yourself up to like a full day of being like, "Well." I'm going to come back at you with another offer, so you have right. to like, deal with that person all day long. Yeah, while That's you're a here. That's point, because that, that shit happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like while you're here, now that I've already agreed to the $3,700 price, because they got you for a couple Could hundred you more. This too? Can you go ahead and add this on there? I'll run to the store and grab it. Can you throw yeah, this? You know, another 400 right. And they're just like, yeah, the, the check you sent us bounced. Yeah, I'll write another one next week. Yes. <laughs> it ends up being that person. So, I mean... You, you're you culturing your customer to that, right? So in that scenario, on the don't haggle yourself, in that scenario, you need to come, like if it's a bigger job, you need to come up with three options, right? You need to come up with a $3,700 option, a $4,600 option, and a $5,900 option. Yeah. And I'm just pulling those numbers out of my butt, but what, what I'm saying is you need to come up with a range, and the, the more options include more scope and more work and more peace of mind, and then you let them pick, and you it's that them, simple. You let them pick their value, their, their, the comfort level they have with the value that you're providing at, at each level. Yep. 
And so uh, and people are different. You know, uh, people. I'll give you a prime example of this. Um, years ago, I used to be, uh, I started, it, I, I was the lead sewer sales guy for a plumbing company, and then I started their whole sewer, sewer replacement? Re- yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I started their whole sewer replacement division. And we were struggling with sales and everything else, and mm-hmm. I knew from some other sales background that I had that we had to get to an, an options platform, right? So I just took it upon myself. And I created this document on Microsoft Word, and it was right there on my computer. And I would go out to my truck, and I would type everything up really quick, and I'd tell the customers, I'm going to go type this up. I'll be right back in, right? I would never, ever email them a fucking bid. If you're in sales, stop emailing bids. Do people do that? Oh, God, yeah. It, my guys do it, too, and I hate it. Um, you know, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. It's the worst fucking thing ever. <laughs> An email, like people are cultured to click delete on emails because they get so many spam emails. So the fastest way to lose a bid is send it via via email. Yeah. Right. So I would go out to my truck. I, I I had them install a printer in my truck. I went out to my truck. I would type it all up on Word. I would print it up and they'd have three options. And so I'd go back in and I'd say, okay, I got three options for you. All three of them include the exact same sewer. Exact same work. We were doing pipe bursting sewer lines. So we'd pull a new sewer through their old one. Um, I said, all three include the exact same sewer repair, so you don't have to worry about the quality of your sewer. However, the base option is we dig the hole outside, and we put the dirt back in, and we walk away. So you're going to have a big mound of dirt, and it's going to take forever to settle, and you're going to have to have a landscaper and all this stuff. The middle option is we use a vibrating compactor, and we pack all that dirt in in 6 to 12-inch lifts, and you might still have a slight mound, but I can guarantee you you will not have to wait for settling. It, that, that pile will never get smaller. You could scrape it off and do whatever. Yeah. Okay? You still have to have a landscape. Have a little bit of dirt in your stuff. Gotta right. seed it. Gotta do something. Right. Option three, full restoration. Full compaction backfill, excess spoil removal, seed, sod, the whole nine yards, like full turnkey everything, right? Yeah. We started selling so many sewers when that happened. I mean, so many sewers. We didn't change anything of what we did. I made the price more expensive on the other options. Yeah. Most people picked option one. Some would pick option two. Rarely, I think only ever, like once or twice, did we do option three. Like they realized they could hire a landscaper for cheaper than what we were pricing or, it at. Or they can go to Home Depot and get a bag of seed and be like, I can go out there and throw some seed on it and get right. rid of a few, a little bit of dirt. Right. And, so, save, five, and save, my, save myself, quote unquote, for no one watching, $500. Right. You know? So option three was a total tease, but it gave them a context to base the value off of, Mm -hmm. right? When we were only selling them, like we were selling like a base, a base sewer was like 6,700 bucks. Okay. So for 6,700 bucks and all we were doing was selling a sewer for 6,700, we weren't selling very many. The moment I started selling a $6,700 option, a $7,700 option and a $9,000 option for the exact same sewer, we started selling $6,700 sewers left and right. And it was literally the customer needed the ability to see that I'm actually saving money by not going with these higher options, and it provided really good value to the bottom They felt the like they option. were getting value mm-hmm. yeah. in what you were offering them. Yep. Also, too, I, I noticed I actually, anytime someone wants me to like do like any like photography, I've actually switched to flat rate pricing. What I noticed, too, is you actually get a yes or no really quickly. Yeah. So you know when to move on. It's not like... Hey, you reached out last week, or you kind of it just like if they don't message you back and it's been a day, then it's like that's obviously no. So it's like yeah. when yeah, you're you don't up have front, to worry about it. You just move on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, number four. Number four. Never reduce price without reducing scope. So we kind even, of talked about that. Yeah, even on the three options mentality, you might still have somebody wanting to haggle a little bit more, right? Like, what if I dig the hole for you, or you know, whatever. Like no on that on that sewer. That. No one's ever said that to me. Can I dig the hole? Oh, I'm like, yeah, shit, sure, yeah, you can. Here's yeah. a shovel. You got any cold beer so I can watch? I'm gonna yeah. go to Quick Trip what? and get some corn dogs. I'll be back in three hours. And, yeah. I mean, this this changes, it, bro. This changes for every repair out there. But the moment somebody's asking for a significant discount, like let's say you give them a three thousand, like let's say your bottom option's three grand, and they're going, man, all I can afford is twenty five hundred bucks. Find five hundred dollars worth of value to take off of your three thousand dollar price and take it off. Right? Let's say you're replacing a whole bunch of cast iron drain lines. This might not be worth five hundred bucks, but it'll make the sale for you. Tell them like, okay, for twenty five hundred, I can't haul off all the old cast iron pipes. 
So if I can leave those here, yeah, I'll, I'll stack I'll, them in the corner. Yeah, I'll clean up. Yeah, but if I can leave those here, you got a deal. And and what you're doing, no one wants to carry that shit. No one wants to carry it. They may they may they may accept you at the twenty five, or they may say, "Ah, oh, screw it, go ahead and go with the three thousand. Like it's a it's a toss up, right? Yeah. Most will just say, "Go ahead with the three thousand. But what you're doing is you're establishing credibility to your pricing, and you're establishing confidence in your pricing. Well, you're, and you're establishing the fact that certain things cost an amount. Yeah. And you have stacked those things up to get to that price. Well, right. a, you it, didn't just pull that price out of your butt. Five hundred dollars was for dragging that stuff off. Right. And that stuff's here. And that's something that they can tangibly see. They may not know um how to build a tree back. Right. You know, they may not understand all that. They may not know what that takes and what that entails, but they know what picking up all that fucking pipe is mm-hmm. they know that that is a hassle and they know that it's backbreaking and they know that it's dirty. Yeah. So you've basically almost given them part of the experience without giving them the experience and allowed them to say, you know what? These guys do know what they're doing. I don't want to deal with that. That's why I'm paying them to do this. Yeah. It's like a cause and effect too, where it's like they kind of get the concept of like, Oh, if I take something away, then the price goes, he's just like, Price goes down, take something away. You know? Well, yeah, what it's what it's sending the message of is every time you ask for a discount, you get less work. Yeah. So it gets them to stop asking for discounts real quick, right? Yeah. Now, sometimes you have to get creative on that one, right? Um, I've done I've done things like offering to leave debris there for them to handle. Um, I've done things like um, reducing warranty. Typically, we would do like a like a lot of stuff we do has a one year warranty on it. Maybe we're going to reduce that to ninety days. Yeah. Like sometimes you're you're kind of having to like almost feel like you're making stuff up to reduce scope, but the moment you reduce price without reducing scope, you are you devalued yourself. You devalued yourself, right? Yeah. So, um other things that I've done is I've when I didn't really have scope to remove. Um I've done things like I can do it for that, but I need the liberty to schedule that at my convenience. Mhm. Um, oh, that's a good one. In other words, I'm going to wait until calls are slow, and then if I have to take a hit on your job financially, it'll be at my leisure. It'll be at my leisure, right? Yeah. Um, and so I've done things like that before people too. People do not like that. Well, I've had especially start- in this day and age. You know, a lot of people like back in the day, they were patient. They were willing to wait. Mm-hmm. You know, when your furnace didn't work. No big deal. Come out tomorrow. Right. It's fine. I can cut some wood. I can do this. People are tough. Now there's just a bunch of crybabies with cell phones. Oh, my, my toilet doesn't work. Well, how many do you have in your house? Five. Yeah. I need you out right now. I need now. you now. Well, yeah. I, I ran into this. freaking kidding me? Yeah. I ran into this, too. It's already cut you off. Damn it. Awesome. <laughs> well, we it's like, find a new I literally, for I literally <laughs> um, there was this, uh, this girl we were doing family photos for, and she kept changing the date. And so I said, after the third time, I said, if you change the date again, like, I'm not refunding your deposit. I'm just not taking your pictures. Yeah. So it was like the next time she scheduled, it was like, okay, she actually showed up. So I was just like, I'm not going to do this whole, like, back and forth thing where I'm just like, I'm taking your... Have a rescheduling fee. See? You learned a lesson there. If you reschedule, mm-hmm. it's another $25. Right. Mm-hmm. Because that means I either have mm-hmm. to bump someone or you've cost mm-hmm. me my that time. Yeah. It was just in my... Con- I couldn't schedule mm-hmm. someone there. It was yep. just in my contract of, like, after the second reschedule, I'm basically... I'm not required to go out of my way to, like, schedule another date. It's like, I can just take the deposit that, you know, she gave yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, last one. Leave last that. one. Never run sales. We've kind of hit on this yeah. throughout everything else. Yeah, yeah. The moment you run a sale, you're establishing that the, the item was never really worth what you were asking for it originally. And so now that it's on sale, it might be worth that. It might even be worth less. You never know. Dude. So um, it's just <clears throat> not smart. Now, what you can do in place of running sales uh, is if you have like a repeat customer or something like that, what you can do is you can offer a fixed a fixed value to the repeat customer, not to the item. And so what I mean by that is like uh, on every year for Christmas, we email our, or we send out Christmas cards to every single customer we have. Like we mail them Christmas cards, yeah. right? And there's a $30 off like coupon on that Christmas card. It's not attached to any one thing. It's a, hey, here's a Christmas gift from us, $30 off anything. Right. Yeah. And so our the value of everything that we do stays high. It's thirty dollars off anything. Right. Well, and that's I used to kind of do. Well, it wasn't really like that. But another way to do it was 
I would tell people, like if I went into their house to change out their heating and cooling system, mm -hmm. I would tell them, you know, your water heater's looking old. I can change that out. My price would normally be this. But if we do it at the same time, it's going to be 25% less. Yeah. Maybe you're not devaluing yourself because right. you explain, but you have to explain to them. The reason that is, is because it saves me a trip charge. Mm -hmm. I only have to drive here once. You're getting the same quality of work, the same heater, the same warranty, the same everything. You're saving the money because I don't have to make two trips. Right. I don't have to... Um, stock the truck twice i come one time and i'm ready to go right so i'm just giving you that option here yeah if it's an old rusty one that's got a slow drip you, that's a sale immediately yeah right yep. i mean there are things that you can do that are not quote unquote having a sale but will can offer people a great deal of value make you you more money on the invoice yep. to get that extra sale that you know can really help push your personal sales. Yeah. If you ever run a sale, it needs to be a value added sale. Right. So for instance, if you're in HVAC, um, you could say, you know, for every furnace you buy, you can get a water heater for X, right? Yeah. It's, it's a value add. You're yeah. adding to the ticket by doing that, right? Yeah, you're not taking um, away. And, and exactly. you're bundling. So with, with bundling comes efficiency from the service side of things. So with bundling and efficiency from the service side of things comes reduced pricing. So like we operate on flat rate pricing. Um, flat rate pricing is built for like you go out to somebody's house and you do one or two tasks and then you're done. Well, if somebody asks us to perform like eight or ten tasks, well, now our pricing starts to get a little out of line. Yeah, Be because, you know, we can do eight or ten tasks in the time it would normally take us to do five or six because we got their water off one time. We've driven out to their house one time. Right. You know, and, and so the guys know that they can they can bundle items together and create like a custom task. That's that's all. It's a custom task if they do all that together at once. And it's not a discount. It's not a sale. Like we're very upfront and we tell them that when you start packaging all of these together, the pricing can get a little out of line. So if you are interested in all these together, let me know, and I can put together a package price for you. Right. So it's no different than water heaters. That's adding value. Yeah. Like yeah. for me, like what that looks like is I used to charge by the hour or like, but now it's like I just do three packages of like number of photos. Mm -hmm. Ten photos is like 500, 20 is like six, and then like, the total of the top tier one is, you know, right. 700 for 40 photos or something like that. Right, right. And the thing is, it's not like I'm only taking, it's like I'm taking 200 photos, but you're only getting, you know. Yeah. Topic three. Topic three. Oh, Mitch surprise. is so excited. Trade I, it's not a surprise to me. I, I know what we're talking about. Yeah. He's so excited. I, you know what? To be honest, I'm pretty excited myself. Yeah. Like, you know, during the void, I don't. You know, I don't call Mitch like four times a day. I don't call him <laughs> five times a week. You know, I don't. But with this, I've been on his ass. Yep. So so Dave and I have come up with a awesome way to provide a lot of our Void listeners even more value. Um, this is, uh, so what we've come out with, we've come out with a company that we've put together called Trade Wins. And W-I-N-S. Yep. No D. Winning. Winning. Trade Wins. Um, I should have brought the banner with me. You should have. I didn't think about it. So we have uh, um, we've put together basically a paid mentorship program for people that are interested. Where um, uh, we'll have three different monthly packages or three different monthly amounts, and with each amount, you get more uh, more access to us, direct one on one type stuff, and more access to our minds and, and picking our brains and everything. Um, but it'll be, it'll be an ongoing monthly membership. Uh, and, and as a part of those memberships, uh, we're, we're putting together some online video courses uh, that you will be able to watch. And all those video courses go into great detail on every single step needed to start your business. But they're also followed up with Zoom calls and Facebook groups. And so we balance those Zoom calls and Facebook groups. And so that way, as you guys have questions on the video courses, you can ask them in the Zoom calls or in the Facebook groups. Or if you have a unique question that's kind of like one, what you saw in a lesson, but it's a little bit different, you can ask them in the Facebook groups and on the Zoom calls. And um, 
uh, as as those progress, the the groups turn into almost like a small mastermind, where you have uh, what what a mastermind is is a collection of people all wanting to achieve a common goal, right? And so you have a whole collection of people in this group that they've all been vetted. Um, they've all been by by being vetted. I mean, they, they're all vetted by Dave and I to be in the group. But you can trust that you're getting good, reliable information from anybody in that group. It's not like it's not like a plumbing Facebook group that you would see on Facebook, where you like let's say it's got a hundred thousand members and you have no fucking clue as to the skill level or the business knowledge level of anybody in that group. Yeah, these are people that we will have talked to. Yeah. We will have spoken with. We know where their businesses are. They will be in your group with you. Yeah. The value of having people of the same mindset and the same likeness that can give you tremendous insight into how they're running their companies, the problems that they have had, it is basically like having Mitch and I times a hundred. Yeah. You know, if there's a hundred people in that group, you can reach out to any of those people individually. If they are asking questions and Mitch and I are at, have been answering those questions and you realize that you have a connection with that person or the, this small group of people, you can get to know them. You can bounce ideas off of them. You mm-hmm. can... You can grow at an exponential rate versus just doing it on your own. And That's what's very exciting about it, yeah, I think. With, without a group like this, you're kind of winging it and hoping you're doing it right. And with a group like this... You're either going to be told, no, that's the wrong way to do it. Here's the right way to do it. Or you're going to be told, yeah, that's the right way. Keep going. Right. One of the hardest parts. Affirmation. Right? Yeah. One of the hardest parts about starting your own business is you you don't really know what's right. You, you have an idea of recognizing what's wrong, but you're always kind of in fear that maybe you're going down the wrong path and you don't know it yet. And so a group like this will help guide you and help ensure that you see the level of success that you want to see. And I'm not going to throw Mitch under the bus here, but I, I kind of am. Not, I mean, in a good way. Mitch likes to have affirmation for what he's doing. Yeah. That's just how he's built. Yeah. It doesn't mean he's second guessing himself. He likes to hear that he's moving in the right direction. Lots of people are like that. Yeah. You know, him and I are opposites. I'm not. I don't care. I go forward and drive off the cliff. I'll reset. I'm dead already. You know, I, yep. I'll just, that's not how I am. But lots of people, if, if you hear that you're moving forward, it gives you more energy, yeah. more speed. It allows you to focus instead of second guess yourself. So I'm not saying it's a in, bad in any means what people are like that, but this will allow you to gain that. Yep. And it's almost impossible for you to just go on Facebook or just talk to other guys at the at Ferguson and get you know that level of encouragement. Mm-hmm. You know, and the courses that we're going to dive into, like we get kind of detailed on the show about things but it's kind of hard for us to do that and without glossing over some to keep the show running but the courses are going to be in depth and you're going to be able to go back and watch them over and over again Mm -hmm. and when you have questions directly related to specific items and they don't get answered in the groups or anything else you will have access to us in zoom calls Mm -hmm. it will be me and Mitch and you and we will be able to hammer out whatever issues you're having and that doesn't sometimes that sounds cheesy and dumb but when you're in business for yourself and you are at a crossroads and you don't know what to do and then you have someone that's been there to guide you through it it's tremendous value for what yeah you know we're we're going to be charging for it yeah so we we've come up with three different pricing levels for the thing and um we we've basically got templated out like the types of people that would be good fits for each level and we've got it set up to where we can ensure that no matter which level you choose your business is going to be improve by like tenfold the level of what you've signed up for so um we're going to we're going to be be able to ensure that your business is seeing like 10x revenue for whatever level you're signing up with each month yeah and so uh and if you're not it's probably just because you're not doing the work. Like we're going to be able to yeah. give you all of the examples that you need. And it's so, not just going to be listen to the course, do a couple of things and do it. You have to do the work. Yeah. Like, but if you do do the work, it will benefit you greatly. Yeah. This isn't just some 
you know, oh, well, listen to steps one through eight and double your business by 50. Th- yeah. Stop. You yeah. Know, we're going to give you things to implement, do them, and you will see the result. And yeah. if you don't see the result, get out of the program. Right. You know, you, but you will. Yeah. You will see the results. And the, and the cool thing is with Dave and I, because Dave and I are, are, not similar personalities. We're greatly different personalities, and we have two greatly different backgrounds in business. So um, Dave was really successful at running a one-man shop. Um, I am in the middle of building a nice little plumbing company. Um, And so uh, you you get it from both perspectives. And so no matter what you're wanting for your company, you've got the resources with us and with these groups to make sure it happens. If you want to be a highly profitable one man shop, we can make that happen. If you want to be a, a you know fast growing shop, we can help get you off the ground. Now, who we're not designing this for? If you're already an existing ten man shop, and in let's say you're a ten man shop and doing three million a year, and you're yes. wanting to grow your business from there. We're not there. No, we're focusing there, on guys like us. Yeah, we're guys fo- and gals. I shouldn't say guys. Yeah, um, there are other companies out there. There are other coaching companies out there that will help take your three million dollar business to the ten million dollar point. Our purpose with Trade Wins is to help bring your business into existence, or to help make sure that your new business gets running in the right and healthy direction. Right. So um, we don't really have a. I, when I say if you're a ten man shop or three million dollar company or whatever, you're like you're not really our cup of tea. It's not like a hard line thing. No. But but what we're we're focusing on the guys who are wanting to start and wanting to get started in the right direction. So um, there'll we're be gonna, there'll be a whole lot more information about that coming out for sure. Um, if it, if you are interested in the program at all, yeah, I was going to say yep. just. Send us an email, um, askmitch at mitchsmedley.com. It's the same email that you would send in for podcast questions and everything else. Send us an email there, um, and we will you know, put, the sub, put trade wins in the subject line, and, um, and we will let you know that we received your email, and we'll get you kind of in process, so to speak, so that here in a week or two when we have everything all dialed up and all ready to go, uh, we're able to come at you with you know the full depth of of the three different levels and everything else. And if you don't want to do all that, just message us on Facebook. Yep. And just put your name and say interested in trade wins and put your email on there. Yep. That's all you have to do. And it's probably going to be. My goal is in two weeks to be running. Yeah, we're two we're in the from middle. Today is my. That's kind of my. I think by then it should be off the ground, and we should have sent emails already. Yep. So. I, I, we're when you give us those emails in a week or two, we will be sending you every piece of information you will need. Yep. And if you want to email back and have questions about specifics, other than it, like if we've missed something, we will answer all of them in the email. Yep. Yep. Man, so I'm excited. Yeah. I'm it's, super excited. We have to build a pretty cool website for this to happen. So uh, basically the, lo- the website will give you like login access to all of the video courses and everything else. So, um, and, and, uh, and we're going to be, you know, uh, just another little side note, you know, on the website, you know, we're going to have people that w- there's going to be a link for field pulse mm-hmm. about how you can get straight to field pulse and, um, get engaged with their CRM and we can help you with that. Yeah. We're going to have a, um, the, the guy that's doing our website is going to have cheap websites to get you started on there with a hosting service and everything. If you want to just start the website straight from our platform, yep. we can do that. We make no money off of that. Right. It's right. just, we want to offer you guys that to help get you started without having to go through GoDaddy to do this or, you know, go through so many you unknowns. Don't know to have us really simple. You may just need a super simple three page website that you normally would spend $25,000 on because you didn't know, mm-hmm. you know, at reasonable prices. I don't know any other examples like right off the top of my head, but things like that are going to be part of this group that you're going to have access to yeah. to help grow your business. The the cool thing about groups like this is you get access to our network. And so, um, you know, business insurance, you'll have access, like, I, yeah, I'll give you access to the guy that I get business insurance from. Right. Uh, life insurance, as you're a business owner and you need life insurance, like, the, you get access to all of that stuff. And, and 
the reason that access is so valuable is because, like we referenced earlier, if you go to a Facebook group for HVAC or plumbing or electrical or whatever, there's 100,000 people in that group. You have no way to know if the person replying to your post knows anything about what they're talking about. Um, I've seen examples time and time again about guys that will say, like, I'm going to start a new business. Should I do LLC or S Corp? And and it's literally 150 comments of one word replies of LLC or S Corp, almost like it's a popularity contest. And now you're going to set your business up based off of like which one came up the most. And that's very dangerous. So with us, you get real information on why you should pick one or the other and and go from there. And and it's not just mm-hmm. LLCs or S Corps. It's literally every decision that you have to make to start a business. Well, and yeah, and it, it, if in the online courses and in the group you don't get that then when the zoom calls come and the one-on-one calls come yeah you can say hey i've been through the thing i don't know what to do should i do this or this should i start an llc and i'm going to ask you questions yep i'm going to say how much money do you think you're going to make right do you have a partner do you i'm going to ask you all those specifics and then we're going to give you you should do this Mm -hmm. this is what you should be doing yep if, yep. if it's an LLC, you can go to the state website and you can do it. You might be, need to be a C corp. You probably need to get an attorney, get all that stuff straightened out, and just have them file it for it. All of those questions will be able to be answered in one-on-one scenario if you don't find the answer in the groups or the classes that were. And let's be honest, they're classes. Yeah, that's what they are. They're going to be classes that yep. teach you what to do. Yep. And just like anything else, Man, you, can, you can attend a class and not put in the work and you don't see any results, or you can attend a class yeah, and fail. do the examples and, and you're going to be really, really successful. My so. favorite part is we've been talking about it. We're hoping to have get-togethers. Yeah, in-person events. In-person events where you know we have it in – we don't know what – the first ones will probably be here close to us, but you know in the summertime, we have you guys here. We have speakers. You can talk to us. We can, you know, bring vendors in. We can go drink beers. We can go play golf. We can have dinners. We can really interact with the people that, let's be honest, Mitch and I have been doing this for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, Mitch wrote me my first check today. It was $238. <laughs> so for one year of work, I think I made like negative two cents an hour. <laughs> we don't, listen, we care about making money just like all of you. But I think for both of us, this has really given us a purpose. Yeah. And it really drives us to help people. Yeah. Like, it, especially, um, you know, after 20 years of just doing the grind and doing it and doing it, it's like it's a breath of fresh air for us. Right. You know? Right. And when we, I mean, I can vividly remember in the core episodes, we mentioned there's a lot of people out there that are trying to sell you their bullshit course and all of this stuff. Um, and, in I'm going to eat crow here because I can remember saying in one of those core episodes that we will never try to sell you anything. And essentially with this, we're not selling them anything. Essentially with this program, we're still not selling you anything. Um, the program is going to have a cost to it because it's going to take a very large, considerable uh, amount of David and I's time uh, away from our other businesses. Right. So, um, but I'd rather do this than my other businesses. Yeah. Um, but, um, in this case here, it's a value out. build, right? Yeah. Like it's not really a sale if if you if you exchange money with us and then you're able to turn that into tenfold the profit in your business or ten, tenfold the revenue into your business. That's not really a sale. That's a big giant value add for you guys, and that's the whole purpose of this. So um, um, we're the the big key driver here is we've we've found a way to add even more value to everybody. So. Um, we are pretty stoked and you guys will start seeing a little bit more about this later. So another way you can get on the, um, on the know on that kind of stuff. If obviously send us an email, ask Mitch at Mitch Smedley.com, A S K M I T C H at M I T C H S M E D L E Y.com. Um, or you can find us on Facebook. Um, uh, if you just look up at Podcast of the Void on Facebook, you can find our Facebook page, and we'll be dropping some info out there too. So, um, man, excited! Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's good stuff. So, can, Mitch also has an OnlyFans account that you can reach out to him there too. It's uh, it's <laughs> only uh, vans, and they're yeah. plumbing vans. Uh, <laughs> I have an OnlyFans, but it's just my feet. So. 
I mean, if you're into that. <laughs> if you like looking at hairy toes, you can look at Dave's OnlyFans. Yeah. So. They're not real hairy. I'm pretty, you know. Pick the lint out. I keep them clean, trimmed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I have a knack for just, just tanking conversations. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I should start yeah. a business about teaching people how to just tank conversations. Yeah. It's useful. Yeah. It's useful, you know, if you don't want to talk to somebody. If you want to kill a podcast real fast, just have Austin have on Austin it. Austin producer. <laughs> He's going to tank in three weeks. <laughs> Oh, shit. So, all right, guys. Well, until next time, we will see you later. Have a great weekend. Love you guys.